Okay, we're going to look at answering proportionality questions now. And we've got some rules that we're going to go through to show you uh, how this is going to work. So we're going to start off with the rules first of all. So here we have the th sort of the zeroth rule, isn't it? Uh, the first thing you should look at is we're going to decide if it's direct or inverse proportion. Sometimes you might see not see the word direct, in which case it's going to be direct. But if you see the word inverse proportional, or inversely proportional, then it is certainly inverse proportion. And if, and if it is, we need to write an inverse proportionality statement. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this example as we go through these steps to illustrate how these steps work. So let's read the question. It says, P is inversely proportional to M. Inversely proportional. So this is this has got this extra step about inverse proportion that we need to take care of here. Um, so let's, the first thing we're going to do is decide if it's direct or inverse uh, proportion. And we know that it's inverse proportion. If it is inverse proportion, write an inverse proportionality statement. So that's what we're going to do now. We're told that P is inversely proportional to M. Oops, sorry. P is inversely proportional to M. And then step one is to write a proportionality statement. And remember the relationship between the inverse proportionality statement and the proportionality statement is the one over. So P is proportional to one over M. We're now back to answering standard proportionality questions now. Next step, step two, is introduce a constant of proportionality and find an equation. So we introduce an equation instead of the proportionality sign, and we introduce the constant times whatever we've got on the right-hand side of the proportionality statement. So in other words, we're replacing the proportionality statement with an equals k, if you like, Okay, so K is that constant of proportionality. Now we need step three. It says use the data provided to find the value of K. Okay, now the data provided is two bits of information that link together the value of P and the value of M. Remember, we're trying to find K here. So let's do that. Well, we're told in the question that P is 48 when M is 9. That's the linking data, the data that links the variables together. So we're going to substitute those now into our uh, into this equation that we've got here and uh, put the numbers in. Okay, so instead of P we're going to write 48 equals K we don't know yet times 1 divided by an M is 9. And now we're going to uh, work out the value of k. So from this we can divide, um, sorry, multiply both sides by 9 because at the moment we're divided by 9 here. So we're going to multiply both sides by 9 to get k is 48 times 9. Okay, and if we do 48 times 9, uh, 48 times 9, we get 432. Okay, so 400 so k is 432. Okay, so k equals 432. That's an important thing. Now step 4 says rewrite the equation in step 2. So that's rewrite this equation here. But we're going to, with the value of k in the right place. So we're going to write p, for p here, equals, instead of k we're going to write 432 times uh, 1 over m is here. Right, now we've got an equation re relating P to M and there are no unknowns. We've known, we know what K is, um, so the only thing that we, well I suppose there are unknowns, P and M, but there are no other unknowns. There's no unknown value of K because we've found that. 
So question five now says, answer other questions, basically. So there's going to be some other questions that ask us to use this equation that we've found in step four to, um, to get our marks in the question or full marks in the question. All of this stuff here is important and you should write down each step because it's method marks. Very important that. Okay, so the question is asking us now, calculate the value of P when M is 12. So if we're trying to do that, we're trying to find the value of P when M is 12. So we're going to put P equals whatever that is. That's what we're trying to find. 432 times 1 over 12. Okay, so we've just replaced our M here with 12. And of course, then we just then we just do that. So equals, um, one node here does this nice thing for me where I can uh, just type in equals 432 times 112 equals, oh, I'm doing it, 432 I divided by 12 equals. Uh, I'm just going to have to do that on the calculator then instead. Uh, so, 432 times 1 over 12 is 36. So P is 36. That pen has suddenly stopped working, don't know why. Anyway, the answer is 36 here. Wait a second. 36. B is 36. So when you're doing these questions, if you follow these steps every single time, you shouldn't go wrong.